Valuation is the ultimate KPI. Hey there, welcome to Valuations, a podcast designed to help you increase the value of your business by sharing insights and data gleaned from Truelytics, the premier business intelligence platform for the wealth management industry. My name is Mike Langford, and I'm going to be your host for the show. I'm really excited to have you joining us for this very first episode. That's right, episode number one. But a little word of uh, caution or uh, patience on all of our behalf. This is a brand new show. So like any show, we're going to evolve and grow over time, right? So things are going to change, right? Style, format might change over time. But one thing I thought we'd accomplish today, because it's important at the beginning of any story to kind of introduce the main characters and set the stage for where we hope things will go uh, and the story that we'll write together. And I use that word together purposely because I'm going to need you. You have a role to play in this show. I want to hear your questions, your comments. What would you like us to cover on the show? Who would you like to see on the show? Who would you like to have back on the show, right? Uh, If you've ever listened to a podcast, the format is very social in nature, right? The listeners are just as important as the people in front of the microphone. So with with that in mind, please email us at valuations at truelytics.com or reach out to us uh, via the website. You can go to the website, truelytics.com. There's a contact us form there as well. Or social, right? LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, we're on them. So send us comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, If you are listening to this podcast on uh, SoundCloud or iTunes or Stitcher, any of those, uh, give it thumbs up, thumbs up, like Give us some props. Let your friends know about it. Again, episode one, people need to know about this show. So spread the word. Really, really would appreciate that. Okay, let's get started. Here we go. First episode only makes sense to have who? Terry Mullen, the founder and CEO of Truelytics, kick things off with us. Uh, You can go check out Terry on LinkedIn and got to get his bio there, kind of the IMDB of the business community, LinkedIn. Uh, So Terry has been a leader in the financial services industry for 25 years, a little bit longer than me. He got to start for me. I'm 24 years in. Uh, uh, Over the years, he's held key leadership roles at AIG, Lincoln Financial, Sun Life, and all those happened before he acquired and started Truelytics. So I'm going to let him kick things off in terms of like, where did Truelytics come from? So you ready? Let's dive in. All right. So great to have you, Terry. I'm really excited you can uh, spend some time with us and kind of share uh, what it is that brought you to launching Truelytics and, and where Truelytics is today and kind of your vision for the future. And, and you know, and, and talking about like what brought you uh, to Truelytics, I thought maybe that's a great place for us to start chatting, you know, Um over the course of our conversations uh, together, you've you've shared your your vision for the wealth management industry and, and, and what led you to start uh, Truelytics. Uh, you and I, you know, we we're, I feel like we go way back, right? It's back in 2016, which seems like forever ago when you just acquired Gladstone. Uh, so I thought maybe it would be kind of helpful uh, for the audience or anyone listening for you kind of go back to that point and uh, what made you uh, decide to acquire Gladstone and, and and what did you see in it and, and where do you see uh, things for the future? Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, by the way, Mike. It's uh, great to be here. And um, yeah, you know, it actually starts probably a lot further back than 2016. Um, uh, I've been working in financial services since 1986 uh, when I was a senior in college and uh, became a wholesaler in 1987 uh, in Colorado and covered a whole bunch of states calling on financial advisors. So I've been calling on financial advisors in every uh uh, channel from the independent channel, RIAs, et cetera, and, and have, you know, seen them over the years and, and know what they do and, and, uh, how important of a role they play in their clients' lives. Um, and, you know, one of the things that was very easy to notice is that not a lot of these folks were necessarily great business people. They didn't think of their business as a business. Um, and when I had, uh, it was almost, uh, serendipity. Uh, was exposed to Gladstone in 2016 um, because I met with the founder of Gladstone, who uh, I met for a completely different reason. I met him because he was uh, recruiting me uh, for a a position at a a large firm. Um, And he knew that I had uh, an interest in technology and have been in this field for a long time. And he uh, told me that he had an investment bank called Gladstone, which I did not know. And that they had a technology uh, that he was very excited about and proud of, 
um, that they built and he shared it with me. And, and um, I thought it was brilliant. It was, uh, it was a tool that allowed a financial advisor who was uh, independent to get a valuation of their business. Um, it gave them 40 key performance indicators on their business and it showed them a score. Uh, and I thought it was an incredible business intelligence tool. Um, they had launched it a few years prior, uh, but he admitted that he was in a software company and, and really didn't know what to do with it. Um, so they were thinking about you know, either trying to sell it, uh, raise some money to, to fund it because he didn't want to continue to put any more money into it. Um, or he was just going to let it die a slow death, meaning, you know, no more upgrades. And it would just, uh, you know, over the, over the course of the next couple of years, just, you know, kind of fiddle away. Well, after that, I, I just really couldn't take my, my mind off. And I, I talked to Dan about potentially coming in and helping him. Um, and ultimately led me to the conclusion that it would be better to start Truelytics, which I did with a couple of folks, um, to raise some money and to buy it from him. So, uh, that's what we did in late 2016, and then we uh, rebranded to Truelytics uh, in January of 2017, and and here we are. That's great. I love it. I, lo- I love how it's, sometimes like those you know little serendipity moments, right, where you just happen to uh, meet somebody at the right time, and and it's it's interesting because it always reminds me of that that question that every you know venture capitalist or angel investor when they're looking at a, a startup to potentially fund. Uh, or even a more developed company to fund it, there's always this question of why now, right? Why is now the right time to do that? Uh, what, what was it about you? Like what made, you know, 2016 and now here we are in 2018, what makes it like right, the right timing for Truelytics? Yeah, that's, um, I think it's because the industry is in such transition. Um, you know, this is an industry that has uh, been aging, Right, there aren't a lot of new people coming into it. So the average age of uh, a financial advisor today is almost sixty. So the the industry is looking at you know massive amounts of of, of transition and change. And whenever you have a transition, uh, whenever you have a transaction, uh, succession, or anything like that, uh, you you have to have a valuation. Right? It's the it's the I think the most most important key performance indicator, and we are able to uh, play a role in that. So, um, you know, not only do we have the tool which does what it does, right? It provides business intelligence with through the lens of valuation. Uh, it gives incredible benchmarking, and now we're working with enterprises uh, like broker dealers to help them match up buyers and sellers and successors with people who are looking for uh, a succession plan. And help them to uh, uh, to do that uh, inside of their their own uh, enterprise, and we have all the information or, or much of the information that you would need um, from you know obviously the financials, uh, but we know about their organizational processes, we know about their technology stack, uh, so we can we can help uh, much better uh, help firms match up uh, the appropriate uh, uh, buyers with with sellers, et cetera. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's the, that was the thing that really got me. I mean, I, I always believed that this business was much more than just a, a valuation calculator, if you will. Um, you know, that's, it's certainly good, uh, but it's really about the, the, the other stuff that we can do around the data benchmarking. And ultimately I am positive that we will be able to, uh, have predictive, uh, analytics on you know why firms succeed and do, and don't succeed. Very interesting. You know, it, it's interesting. It, I, I love the fact that you, you kind of keyed in on the fact that it is, it is an industry in transition. Uh, but you know, what's needed is more than just kind of slapping a valuation on on a business. You know, you had said something to me in a conversation a while back that really struck a chord with me. You you keyed in um, on something that you I wouldn't say you found annoying, but you found. Um, I guess somewhat uh, problematic is that a lot of advisors refer to uh, what they do as their as a practice. Right? That, that you, you thought that using the term practice was was not the right mindset. Can you dig into that a little bit? Yeah, um, it's it's a little bit uh, of a pet peeve for me. Um, I joke all the time that practice is for sports and yoga, um, and you know I get that people refer to it as a practice. Um, but I really think that they should think of it as a business um, because it is a business, right? And and they're in uh, a for-profit uh, 
uh, business. And if that's the case, then you should treat it that way. And, you know, it's for financial advisors who who are helping their own clients uh, think about retirement and think about uh, their businesses and business planning. Um, they're in many cases not taking their own advice. Uh, and I think that uh, to look at it as a business, uh, to look at the metrics, to see if, you know, the things that you're spending money on are, are being rewarded or not. Um, are you, you know, spending the right amount on, on marketing, right? Something that you would uh, probably uh, tell people they're not probably spending it enough um, and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I do often joke that uh, it isn't a practice. Uh, think of it as a business and think of the things, you know, because it, it, is, it is sort of a lifestyle business. I mean, a lot of people will say, you know, I'm not, I'm never going to sell my business. I'm just going to continue to do this until I die. Well, you know, that's, that's not a real good strategy because there are a lot of things that can happen. And, you know, one of them is in that unexpected uh, category where, you know, there are things that sometimes happen that are unplanned. And if you don't, if you haven't done the right planning uh, and treated it the right way, um, the people who are going to get most hurt other than your family are your clients. And that's certainly not a, a, a good thing uh, for them. That's interesting. That, that, that tees up my, uh, you know, my, my next question, which is, you know, you spend a lot of time talking about succession, right? That it's really, really uh, an important thing uh, for every financial advisor and, and wealth management firm to, to, to think about. Uh, why is this area uh, someplace where you, you spend so much of, of your energy and, and so much of the focus of, of the messaging that you're putting out for Truelytics uh, with firms? Yeah. Well, because it's so important, right? Probably the biggest decision, uh, most important decision that uh, they're going to make is who they ultimately pick as their successor for their clients. Um, So I think it is something that they really have to spend a lot of time on. And, and one of the challenges is that because there's, there's, it does take time. um, They, they don't plan for the unexpected, right? The, the emergency. And just in the last two months, I've had two phone calls where somebody that uh, that I, I some of our clients had an advisor who passed away uh, without anything in place. And when that happens, it is tragic because the business literally uh, the week before may have been worth two or three million dollars that day and going forward was worth a fraction of that because those clients and assets are just going to go away because by the time they are able to try to, to, to fix it, it's going to be 60, 90, 120 days. And, and those, those clients just go elsewhere. Um, so having a, an emergency plan in, in a worst case scenario is not difficult to do. It really isn't. Um, and, then, and then spending the time to find the right person you know, preferably inside of your own broker dealer network, if, if, if you're with a broker dealer, um, because there's nobody that should be willing to pay more for your business in, than, than someone inside that broker dealer already, because the risk of having to repaper and do all those things just is too great. So, um, you know, really start to thinking about succession, uh, about the personality uh, that you need to, to find. Um, you can test drive it. Um, but it is, it's just, it's so critical and, and too many people just haven't really done, uh, the right planning. And for the vast majority of advisors out there, um, they only have basically their future revenue stream, uh, and maybe, you know, client relationships to sell. You know, it's not like they have, uh, you know, there, obviously there are a lot of firms now that are, um, that are RIAs and, and building infrastructure, et cetera, that, you know, do have, and there are a lot of transactions, but you know, any, if you're just a one man solo practitioner, you know, basically you're selling, uh, your future revenue stream and, and clients. And that means you need to have someone who is a successor who will be able to, uh, go into that transaction with you. You know, it's really interesting. I, sp- I do spend a lot of time talking about that with, with advisors and with firms. It's like, you know, the reason why your clients chose to work with you isn't because you have some sort of spectacular products to offer or that, that no other advisor has. Almost always is because they sat across the table from you, looked at you and decided, 
you're my guy, you're my lady to guide me in my financial future and help me achieve the goals that I want to achieve. And to your point, um, helping that client uh, make a, an educated decision on where they're going to go next should you decide to either exit the business voluntarily or involuntarily uh, and helping them kind of uh, put blessing that next advisor, right? That they can trust them, that they should be comfortable with them is super important to the, the end all value of your business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's interesting. You know, one of the things, again, in our conversations, and, and, and I hear you talk about this, is that, you know, you're so... Um, you're so passionate about the people involved, right? You never seem to ignore the fact that it's, it, it is a relationship business, right? That these are human beings running their, their businesses. Uh, they're trying to accomplish their goals. Uh, they want to do some things that are right by themselves and right, or if, if it's at the broker dealer level, right by their advisors and the end clients. Uh, and it's, it's what, what, why I'm impressed by that is that even though, you know, Truelytics is a, is an analytics platform, right? It, it's heavily numbers and measurement driven, you never seem to lose sight that it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about the people. I wonder, kind of uh, looking a little more internally, uh, if you could share uh, a bit about your people, the team you've assembled there at Truelytics and, and why you feel it kind of uniquely qualifies Truelytics uh, to, to, to solve these problems and, and serve uh, the wealth management industry and, and the advisors uh, and help them achieve their goals that you've kind of been talking about with uh, improving the value of their business and, and helping them navigate uh, successful transitions, successions. Yep. Um, well, it's, it's funny. The original team, um, I was the only person that had any financial services experience. Uh, and, uh, the other, uh, folks that uh, were with me at the beginning, uh, brought, you know, other skill sets around, you know, uh, the internet and, and SaaS, uh, products and, and marketing. So Jeremy Carnell, who is, I, I say it all the time, he's a savant when it comes to, to marketing, uh, has just done an incredible job getting Truelytics uh, up and running and, and, and is not only our chief marketing officer, but also does uh, product development uh, and has architected you know, uh, that just incredibly well. Kevin Gully uh, is able to uh, implement that stuff with our, with our team. Uh, and we've really r literally turned into a software company. A year ago, I, I could not have said that, but we are on a product development path with monthly updates uh, to, uh, to the system that is just incredible. Uh, and the, the progress, I urge anybody to uh, go and, 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 and see, the, uh, see the stuff that, that he has uh, been able to do. And then we um, were very fortunate to uh, bring uh, Jeff Miller in uh, to the fold. Jeff actually originally came to me um, uh, as a potential investor, uh, which he did become, uh, but his background was just perfect for what I needed at the time. And that was someone that could, you know, really uh, uh, operate things. He, his background included most recently uh, where he was at UBS running all products and platforms uh, for them. So he he understands large systems and and enterprise uh, selling, which was something that uh, initially that's not where we were headed. We were originally selling directly to the financial advisor for you know roughly a thousand dollars a year. Um, where today we're selling to large enterprises, broker dealers, custodians, asset managers, et cetera, and that that takes a certain skill set that that. Uh, I didn't have. So he, he was a great um, uh, addition to the team when we brought him in as president chief operating officer earlier this year. Uh, and then we have others that are just, you know, that have tons of experience in financial services. Uh, earlier this year, we hired Carla McCabe uh, as the director of practice management. Um, initially, I did not want to actually be in the consulting business. Um, I wanted to provide people with data and information so they can make their own decisions. Uh, but I was overwhelmed by people asking for us to help them, um, and I was giving away a lot of a lot of uh, information for free. So uh, we decided that we would um, uh, build out a practice management group, which we we are doing, and Carla's running. Um, Casey Logan runs uh, our client experience, does all the onboarding. Um, she and I actually uh, started the same time in 1986 as seniors in college for the same firm back way back then. So 
Casey and I go way back. She's worked with financial advisors for uh, her entire career. Um, and then we have uh, Hillary Madge uh, and Ilana Levitan who uh, are helping in many ways. Hillary is a uh, is digging into the data to tell us what it's what it's telling us. Uh, and and Alana is uh, doing anything we ask her to do. That's fantastic. You know, it's really interesting. You mentioned some of these key points, and I think they oftentimes uh, companies overlook. And you know, one of the, one of them that gets overlooked is, you know, you've got to make sure that clients, especially if they're uh, implementing a new technology, have somebody to hold their hand and walk them through the process and successfully get started. And I, I've seen a lot of technology firms that kind of forget that, and as a result. Uh, you know, people try it and then abandon it because they never could could really feel like they could stand up on their own. Uh, so I think it's a smart idea uh, to you know, in terms of customer success and, and practice management, to, to really be looking at those things early in the in, in the process. Yep. Yeah. We. I mean, we recognize the fact that you don't need evaluation every day, right? So it's not like people are going to be coming to uh, us every single day to get evaluation, but. Uh, there are things that they should be looking at much more frequently than they are. And that those are the things around the benchmarking and being able to see where you stack up against uh, uh, others, your peers, uh, the market, uh, and we're able to show those types of things. And we, we believe that we will uh, ultimately be the largest database for those types of uh, metrics. Um, we currently have over uh, 1,200 uh, financial advisory firms on the platform, and that is growing every day. And we have enterprise arrangements with uh, broker dealers and uh, other enterprises that comprise of over 30,000 advisors that we are in the process of of bringing onto the platform. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Great work in such a short time. Okay, so now I have the big question for the future. Um, you know, Bill Gates famously uh, said, and I, I, don't, I couldn't find out where he said this. I think I, I remember him saying this on one of the late night talk shows, actually. But, you know, he mentioned that he had a dream of you know, back in the 80s. I have a dream of having a desk in every a computer on every desk in every home. Right. Uh, and people kind of thought that was a little ridiculous, but that was really before the Internet started getting going. And, and there was a need uh, from a communications perspective. But uh, so what would you say is kind of like your equivalent? Uh, dream for the wealth management industry and, and how they'll, be, you know, that, that will manifest itself by benefiting from the things you guys are doing uh, at Trulytics. What, what, what do you think is the, the, your dream, if you had to have that audacious dream? Yeah, well, obviously it would be that every financial advisor would be on our platform uh, that's independent and, and have, a, have a great business intelligence tool that uh, provides them with, you know, uh, really great data. And, and more than that, because data is just data, but information. And, uh, you know, ultimately, because if we can do that uh, or get the vast majority of them on there, we're going to start to be able to tell people things uh, about that. And we'll be able to show people uh, what are the things that make successful financial advisory firms? What do they do? What technology do, do they use? Um, and, 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 and things like that. And for the enterprises, it's going to provide them with much better, uh, much, much better information so they can help those advisors because, you know, the enterprise has to every day make sure that they are adding value, uh, to their advisors because they have choices, right? They're independent. They don't have to work with one broker dealer or another. As a matter of fact, in some cases, they don't even have to work with a broker dealer, right? They can, they can become a registered investment advisor and, and directly connect in with a, with a custodian. Um, but we can help them uh, w- with others that, that they work with to uh, better support their, uh, their, those firms. And then finally, uh, we want to help the folks do the best they can in that transition uh, because there's a lot of folks that are going to be transitioning uh, out of the business, and, and we believe that we have a better platform to be able to do that. Uh, um, uh, for both the firm and for the enterprise. That's fantastic. So this has been really great. I really do appreciate you uh, helping me kick off the podcast here. It only seemed natural to have yeah. uh, you as, as, the, as the first official uh, guest. Well, I guess you're you know, co-hosting today. We're doing great. <laughs> this is awesome. I, uh, you know, you're going to be uh, the new Joe Rogan or uh, uh, Dave Rubin. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, so what's the best way? I mean, people are probably going to have lots of questions, want to chat with you, want to learn a little bit more about Trulytics or catch sure. up with you on and, and run some ideas by you. 
uh, that that you 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 uh, shared acro- across this uh, platform today. Uh, what's the best way for people to kind of follow up with you? Uh, Terry at truelytics.com, T-E-R-R-Y at T-R-U-E-L-Y-T-I-C-S. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Terrence Mullen. I believe, I think you can probably get it under Terry Mullen. Uh, and of course, uh, truelytics.com um, is uh, the website and our phone numbers are on there. I think, um, I think it's actually my cell phone number is on there. Um, and, uh, Great. people are always surprised when I answer the phone and I go, well, it was ringing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Once again, Terry, I appreciate it. And it's been a great first episode and, uh, we'll chat with you later. Awesome. Take care. Thanks, Bye.